Welcome back. Today we are going to discuss about drug receptor theory. Okay, so three important terms we need to discuss today uh, regarding the drug receptor theory. The first one is affinity, and the second one is efficacy, and the third one is potency. Okay, remember the three terms. Okay, let's get back to the affinity first. Affinity is nothing but the tendency of a ligand. Okay, ligand is nothing but a drug. Okay, so it's a, the tendency by which a ligand binds to its receptor, it shows its affinity. Okay, so for example, there is a, a drug, okay, like this, and a receptor like this. Okay, this is drug, and this is a receptor. So, if the drug has a high tendency to bind to the receptor, then it will elicit a response, okay? That response is the biological, that biological response is, is it the efficacy of the drug, okay? Efficacy of the lichen, what we call drug or lichen, one and the same. Okay, so let's say there is a drug A and drug B. Okay, so drug B we need just one milligram, and drug A we need 100 milligram to produce a same response or to show the same efficacy. Let, let's say uh, 100 milligrams is producing 100% efficacy, and one milligram is producing one hundred percent efficacy so which drug is more potent obviously drug B is more potent because just one milligram is is producing hundred percent response so the amount of ligand needed to cause a measured response shows its potency so let's get back into the details of the the drug receptor theory now okay so a ligand when it binds with the receptor okay as I mentioned ligand is nothing but a drug guys okay ligand when it binds with the receptor okay there will be a drug receptor complex okay it is a ligand receptor complex or drug receptor complex will be there okay this re and then this will elicit a response or responses, either one. Response or responses. Okay, there are uh, different types of responses are there. There is a quantal response, and there is a continuous response. So let's get back. Let's get into that continuous response and dichotomous response or quantal response. One and the same. Continuous or dichotomous okay two response continuous continuous is also known as graded response remember this one term graded response continuous is also called as graded response so why we're calling it a graded response or continuous response because we can measure the response let's say blood pressure heart rate okay and prothrombin time can we measure this yes we can grade this we can we'll know whether it's high or low they are, these responses are continuous response, so we can grade them. So that that's why they are called graded responses, or continuous responses. But there are some responses which are called dichotomous responses, guys. They are also known as quantal, quantal responses. Okay, these are also called as all or none responses, by the way. Okay, so why we are calling it all or none or quantal or dichotomous dichotomous means two by the way two call me look at the dictionary and find out the word meaning okay so why we are calling it all or none response for this particular response because let's say there is a person is suffering with a headache okay or an epileptic seizures epileptic seizures okay so death or cancer or any kind of analgesia okay so all these responses 
either all or none whether the patient is suffering with a headache yes or no that's it whether the patient is having epileptic seizures he has a seizures or he don't have a seizures okay it's kind of yes or no whether the patient is having cancer or he is not having cancer okay that's why we are calling it all or none death either the patient is alive or he is dead it's all or none whether he is all alive or he is dead one so it's not like we can measure the seizures percentage okay we cannot measure the death percentage but here in, in the in case of blood pressure or heart rate or prothrombin time we can grade so that's why it's called graded response okay so remember this the drug receptor theory we will uh, continue this in our next lecture